Welcome back YouTubers. Today I am going to install this truss rod. I'm going to epoxy this in and put the fretboard back on the neck. It's been a while since I did this. Uh, my last video was probably over a couple of years ago and uh, things got in the way so I've decided to come back to this, try to get it sorted so I can continue with the series. Um, the first thing I did is I put the straight edge along the both sides of the uh, neck and I've sighted it so that everything is level. I double checked it with this one as well which actually I find a bit easier to use. It sort of rests more easily on the neck and everything is good. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, It's perfectly flat. Um, what I'm going to do is just to run some tape along the edge here. Just so that I can epoxy this in. Let's move it a little bit closer to the edge. Just so I can epoxy this truss rod in. And not get too much on the neck itself. Doing this real time. I've just got some very basic epoxy here, something I bought on eBay, I think, or maybe Amazon. I don't, I don't remember. But it's a cheap. It's called Hilka. It's a cheap two-part epoxy. What I'm going to do is mix them up. I'm going to run it along the edges, both sides here. I'm going to also run it along the truss rod, which um, is ready for installation. You can see how black that is where the and on the top here where it was all corroded. Now I never did really find out whether that was aluminium corrosion or that white powder that was in the previous video or if it was um, possibly just some glue that was used that has long since decomposed. Anyway, um, whatever the reason, this is ready to slip in. It's quite a, it's a fairly tight fit I'd say so there's not going to be a lot of room for glue. I've got everything ready. I have all my clamps here. I figured out the order they're going on. I've got the truss rod here. I put a little bit of um, graphite grease on the threads. I won't be able to get to those once this is installed. Um, so that's good. I'm going to drop a few drops of super glue just on the end here to keep this this little nut here is loose. Uh, there's enough graphite on the thread so that this shouldn't interfere with this threading up and down. Um, I think it won't mix with the graphite so that should be fine. It should just wick in anyway. I'm not going to put a lot on. Um, what else have I got? I got my glue ready. Got my glue board. I put some tape on it. I made myself a little piece of wood. That's going to sit right on top of the uh, truss rod so that when I clamp it will only push down on the truss rod and I'm taped. So this is it. Um, once you start you can't go back. So I decided to put the glue on the truss rod first because it's metal. It's not going to absorb. The idea being it should stay pliable a bit longer. I'm going to stand it this way on a piece of tape so any of the glue that does run will run down to the bottom and when it's fitted it'll be pushed back up as it fits hopefully to increase the amount of glue and the, the strength of the bond. And I'm going to use a small brush because I thought it'd be better than the stick. I think I can actually apply the glue exactly where I need it uh, more accurately. Well I thought I'd spare you the tedium of me mixing the glue but um, I thought we may as well just do the whole process 
so you know exactly what I went through. Okay, so first thing I did is I took the cap off the glue but enlarged the holes in the hope that this would go more easily. Okay. Um, there's a sort of piece of plastic here that acts as a brake to stop this from being pushed. So should work now. Something's happening. Gee. Because this all happens when you make a video. There we go, it's coming out now. I'm probably going to make more than I need. I'd rather do that than and not have enough. Given that this is a fairly high risk situation, I don't really want to have to stop and mix up more glue. Okay, so I'm going to start the mix. So I'm going to put a strip of tape along the desk. I'm going to apply this along the edge. Just make sure that that's right. it's all covered. So I want to do the brush. I, I get a sense of how much I'm putting on when I'm using a brush which I can't get with a wooden glue stick or popsicle stick. As I said earlier, I'm going to turn it so uh, the bottom is down, so if anything runs, it'll get pushed up when I fit it. Okay, so while that's sitting there, I'm going to go along and do the inside of this. Same thing. Both sides. What's nice about putting it on the wood, although you probably can't see it on the camera, is that as I apply it, the wood darkens almost instantly. So you can see exactly where you've been. see my head in the camera, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to keep it off the bottom. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, 
the glue seems to be getting a bit stiffer so I need to get this in fingers. So I just want to remove what I can from the top so the wood doesn't stick. on either side and then I'm going to apply these clamps Just the first one. I've got a bigger one here for this end. Just doing them loosely to start with. Some of these clamps are pressing up against the bottom of the neck, but I do have felt pads on each one. On the bottom of each clamp. Okay, I can see it's clear on both sides, so maybe not so much here as it could be. There we go. And now I'm just going to tighten these up a little bit more. A little bit more pressure. I'm quite sure it's seated in the bottom anyway. I don't want to overdo it. I might distort the neck. Yeah, that's good. There's no point in over tightening these things. You can see the piece of wood sitting on the truss rod. And then I've just clamped it, not too tight, with the clamps. See that end. Right, I'm going to take this off now so we can see what's been going on. I suspect it's nice and dry. It's only dry enough. stuck. I'm trying to push it to the side and not up in case it pulls anything with it. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And then the next step is to bond this to the neck. Put the fretboard back. That should be good. We're getting there slowly but surely. I'm just going to use a levelling beam just to take off the little bit of epoxy that's squeezed out.
like that. So this should now go on there. Now when I fit this I'm using tight bond hide glue, genuine hide glue. This is designed so that if you want to remove the fretboard later a little bit of heat will soften this up and you can remove it much more easily than I did when I took it off the first time. I've aligned the fretboard with the top edge of the neck so it feels quite comfortable to put on your fingers across it. The fretboard isn't sticking out or the binding isn't sticking out beyond the top of the neck. On the bottom, because I've sanded some off, there's a little bit, it's a little bit fatter at the bottom here. It's very, very slight, but I can feel it sticking out. It's more up here where I sanded it away. And it would have been there too, but I've adjusted the fretboard, so you can feel it on the bottom. Just a smidge in there. A fair amount here, but you're not likely to be playing this high up the neck anyway. Um, so I feel that's the best way to do it. So everything is everything feels good from the top and I can sort this out later maybe with a bit of sanding and you won't see it so much when the guitar is played because it will be at the bottom. I'm sure I can disguise it anyway but it's that's just the th way I'm thinking about it. Now I've got a very small drill small drill bit um, it's protruding just over a centimeter about 12 mil and I've decided I'm going to drill a hole through the, this end fret here, which is the dead fret, into the heel of the neck, so sorry, into this part of the neck where it's uh, thickest. And um, I'm going to do the same down here, probably on the end fret on the opposite side, and I'll drill in. I'm going right where the fret's going to be, so the hole will be covered up when the fret goes in. So I'm just coming in a little ways. Don't want to get too close to the, well, the, the truss rod actually ends here, so um, let's do it over here. So that's that one, and on the opposite side at the back here, I'll do the other one. I have these very fine nails, stainless steel power pens. What I'm planning to do is to drive them through. Do the same on this end. Okay. came out very easily. There we go. So you can see here the two holes where the nails were. of space to do it. I'm not going to come through the back of the guitar neck. Now the plan I have here is I'm going to put the nails in. I'm not going to tap them down too far. That's pretty solid.
open a bit more. See if I can locate them in the wood here. I don't think they're going to come up too far. I don't think it's going to be a problem with the frets. But if it is, I simply take one of these nails, I can grind the point off and just knock it back in. I've allowed for it to go in further by drilling a bit deeper. My next step is to glue the fretboard onto the neck. So what I've done here is I've done a dry clamp. I've figured out exactly how I'm going to do it. What clamps need to be where. And um, I'm about to take those off and glue it up for real. So the next step is to put some tape on the part of the fretboard where the truss rod will be. The reason for that is you want to keep the glue off the truss rod, so that one's ready. And I've put a little bit of the same kind of tape above the truss rod and left a little bit at this end so I can peel it off um, when it's glued up. I made this in the garage. It's basically a bit of plywood. It's roughly the same width as the neck. And I put two strips of dense foam. This is a sticky back foam material and that's going to be applying pressure to the fretboard pushing it down on the edges so we get a nice join along both sides and with the locating pins here and here to stop it moving and the clamp up or the pre-clamp that I did earlier to make sure that everything is the way I need it um, I'm hoping this is going to be just fine so I'm going to start off by gluing the fretboard, then I'll move it down here and glue the neck. Now the other thing I might just make a note of is how far the fretboard comes so I don't over glue. Well, I think it's fairly clear, it's just, just beyond the pin. So. so we're good. So we'll start with the fretboard. Supposed to have about 30 minutes of um, work time with this. It says longer assembly time for interior use, so I'm hoping it will be okay. I won't feel under the gun to get this done quickly. Right, well, it's transparent. First time I've used this. It's very runny, which is probably a good thing. Okay. So we've got a brush here, we'll brush it in. I've got a feeling I put too much on. Yep. Probably got too much on here. So what I'm going to do is to apply it onto the neck as well. Okay, well this is how you learn, you know, I've not used this glue before. I approached it like it was tight bond or something like that and it's not. It's an entirely different type of glue. With a completely different feel to it. Different characteristics. Shall I get right to the edge? Got a nice even amount of glue. Okay. Drop that down there for a second. I might need a bit more on here. I'll say I quite like it, to be honest. It's a nice workable glue. Put it all over my 
fingers now. Silly me. Silly me. Okay. Make sure I've got enough at this end, particularly right here. Okay, I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to pull this off. Not too quickly, I don't want it to tear. See just a little bit there where it hasn't had the glue. Let's put that on there. Let's do the same with this. to engage those pinholes. Careful. That's it. Okay. It's not clamping up. I can see quite a lot of this is coming out. It's not I wasn't quite expecting that. Interesting. Okay. Right, so I've got these in order. So we'll start with this one. cloth here. I decided I'd put a bit of water on the cloth because just dampen it because I'm rubbing this off the uh, surface that's already polished so or polyurethane I'm not sure exactly what it is so it's not going to make that much of a difference in terms of it getting into the wood it won't so let's clean it off to start with okay I might have to do that a bit more later so let's carry on. So I'm centering this on this little board that I made and that's applying pressure to the outside. Just gonna have a good look. I can tighten some of this down a bit more. Make sure I've got a good clamp and an even clamp all the way across. Well there it is, I wiped the excess glue off with a stamp rag, I tried to keep it away from the gap 
or the joint between the fretboard and the neck. There is no gap actually. Um, I'm sure it would have just probably chipped off all right because it wouldn't have stuck to the polyurethane finish, but I just didn't want to risk it, so I wiped it off. There's still some bits. There's some stuff that's sort of collected on top of these pins. Um, but I'm sure that will come off tomorrow. I'm going to leave it now overnight to set off and take it apart tomorrow and have a look.